Lesson on magnetism. We are all familiar with magnets, but did you know only three materials are naturally magnetic? Those materials of iron, nickel, and cobalt. You may know that metals are great conductors because they're free electrons, but many conductors are not naturally magnetic. The first naturally magnetic material discovered was called lodestone and found in the province of Magnesia, Greece, where magnets got their name. Here we can see some lodestone being waved over a compass, and you can see the compass needle rotating in response. You can also see that lodestone picks up paper clips demonstrating its magnetic properties. In class, we've used dipole magnets. That is a magnet with two poles, a north pole and a south pole. And we're familiar with that magnetic field as it runs from the north pole and then dives into the magnet in the south pole. These magnetic field lines go from pole to pole. And as one magnetic field line leaves a north pole, it has to arrive on the south pole. But did you ever wonder, what would happen if you broke a magnet in half? Well, if we broke this dipole magnet in half, we would get two smaller magnets, each with a north pole and south pole, as shown. In other words, when you break a magnet in half, you don't get one end that's only a north pole and the other end that's only a south pole. These would be called magnetic monopoles. And currently, we don't see these naturally existing in nature. But it's theorized that when the Earth in the very early universe, right after the Big Bang, that magnetic monopoles did exist. Here we can see this horseshoe magnet attracting these iron filings. So we can see the magnetism, but we know that electricity produces magnetism. So if this is the magnetism, where is the electricity? Well, to better understand that, let's take a look at a microscopic view of a material. When we take that view, we can look at the areas of that material broken up into little areas called domains. Here each one of these little areas is called a domain. And within each domain there are little currents that flow. So maybe in this domain the currents are flowing in this direction. This domain the currents are flowing this way. In this domain currents are flowing this way and so on throughout the material. If you notice all the currents are flowing in different directions in each domain. Thus, this material is non-magnetic. However, in a magnetic material, the current flows in each domain, starts to line up, and all flow in the same direction, as shown. It is those lined up currents in each domain that cause this material to become magnetic. Looking at a direction where they're all fl flowing towards gives you an idea of where the North Pole may be and where a South Pole may be. Recall that we can take conductors that are not normally magnetic, and if we can align their electrons up within their domains, those materials can then become magnetic. This lining up of currents may be due to another magnetic field, or also may be due to temperature, and, or other changes in characteristics of the material. The Earth's magnetic field is similar to a dipole magnet, except it runs from south to north in terms of running opposite the geographic north and south poles. We also know that it is ready to flip. Otherwise, the Earth is ready to undergo a magnetic reversal in that the Earth's magnetic south pole will flip down to here and become lined up with the south geographic pole. It has been studied that the Earth's magnetic field reverses itself about every 200,000 years. But the last reversal was over 600,000 years ago, so we're long overdue for this magnetic field to swap from south to north. During a reversal, it is possible that we'll have multiple poles or a quadrupole field around the Earth. The Earth's magnetic field is important because it protects us from space weather. Well, what's our nearest source of space weather? Well, that would be the sun. The sun constantly emits particles in the form of a solar wind that bombard the Earth's magnetic field. These charged particles travel from the sun, but never actually impact the Earth directly, except at the poles. When these charged particles, such as electrons, leave the sun, when they encounter the Earth's magnetic field, they actually spiral around the magnetic field lines and then dive into the Earth at the poles, whether that's a south pole, magnetic pole that is, or north magnetic pole, causing the aurora borealis, or northern and southern lights. But how do charged particles interact with magnetic fields? 
As a charge moves through a magnetic field, it experiences a magnetic force due to that field. If we look at our proton here, as it travels straight, once it encounters this magnetic field, represented by letter B, it starts to spiral around that magnetic field line. That is due to a magnetic force due to the motion of the charge in the magnetic field. Here the charge had an, a velocity V, it was charge Q in our magnetic field B. This resulted in a magnetic force pushing this charge around the circle. This is given by this equation as the magnetic force is equal to the charge times the velocity times the magnetic field strength. Notice the units of force are still newtons, charge is measured in coulombs, velocity in meters per second, and our units of magnetic field are Tesla, or capital T. Note that these concepts, force, velocity, and magnetic field, are all vectors. That is, they have a magnitude and a direction. Here's our velocity of the charge in this direction. Our magnetic field is upwards, and this gives rise to a magnetic force that is in this direction. But how can you find the direction of this magnetic force if you know the direction of the velocity in the magnetic field? For this, we need to go to something called the right-hand rule. You can imagine these concepts on an xyz axis, where the velocity would be here, the magnetic field would be here, and the magnetic force would be here. Or if you place your right hand, as shown here, the velocity would be in the direction of the thumb, the magnetic field would be the index finger, and the magnetic force would be the direction of the middle finger. Let's try some examples. Before we can do a practice problem, let's take care of some notation. If you see a dot here, this means that the particle or direction of the concept is towards you or out of the screen. If you see an X, this indicates that the direction of the concept is away from you or into the screen. Let's try some examples. So let's look at the first one. Here we have the magnetic field going upwards and the velocity to the right. Which way is the magnetic force? Well, let's put your thumb in the direction of the velocity to the right of your right hand. The magnetic field will go up with your index finger, and you'll see the force goes towards you out of the screen. And here it is as shown with my right hand. Let's see if you can do the second one on your own. The magnetic field will come towards you out of the screen, and the velocity will go up. What's the direction of the magnetic force? Hit pause and try it on your own. So here we see the velocity is in the direction of the thumb. The magnetic field is coming towards you or out of the screen. And now you can see that the magnetic force is going to be to the right. Here's the third one. Here we have the velocity going away from you and the magnetic force to the right. What's the direction of the magnetic field? Hit pause and try it yourself. So here you can see the thumb is away from me, so there's my velocity. The force is to the right, which is the middle finger, which means the magnetic field will be this way or up. Let's try one last one. Here we have the magnetic force away from you, and the magnetic field is up. So what's the direction of the velocity of the particle? Hit pause and try it on your own. Okay, so here you can see the force is away from you or into the screen. You can just barely see my middle finger right there. The magnetic field is pointed upwards, so this means the particle is moving to the left with a velocity that way. Let's see if we can do some calculations now about magnetic force strength of a charged particle in a magnetic field. Here we have a 20 microcoulomb charge traveling at 1,000 meters per second east in a 5 tesla magnetic field directed north. What is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic force acting on the particle? So let's sketch the directions. Here we have north, south, east, and west. And we have the particle moving in the eastward direction with that, some velocity into a magnetic field that's pointing north. Let's calculate the amount of the magnetic force and then find the direction. 
Recall that magnetic force is equal to the charge times its velocity times its magnetic field that it's in. Let's multiply these numbers out and calculate the magnetic force. So we see we have 20 microcoulombs. Recall that's 20 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs times 1,000 meters per second times 5, te 5 tesla gives us a magnetic force of 0.1 newtons. But what's the direction of that? Well, for that we need to do a right-hand rule. So if the velocity is east with the thumb, magnetic field north with the index finger, you can see that the magnetic force will be upwards away or out of our screen. We will practice more problems like this using the right-hand rule and also calculating the charge, velocity, magnetic field, and magnetic force on a charged particle in motion in a magnetic field. Thank you for watching and see you in class.